This conference will now be recorded. And we'll record the session for um, anybody who wasn't able to join today but was interested. Um, uh, let's start out just by a quick introduction. Um, my name is Kate and I work with Univassist and I'm going to sort of start with some macroeconomic um, and just overall, you know, student mobility data in Brazil. And um, then Henrik and Emily are going to give their perspectives um, from on the ground, and Chris is going to um, give us his perspective as a university. So Emily and Henrik, you guys want to introduce yourselves quick? Just say sure. who are what you do. I am Emily Dobson. I am down in Brazil on the ground, as Kate said. I was a former school-based counselor in Brasilia and then Porto Alegre, and now I'm working as an IEC, and I've worked with KIC the last five years on their Latin America program. I'm Henrik, and I, I'm in Brasilia. I've also been working with Univacist uh, for, for a short while right now, right, Kate? And uh, right now here, I'm also working at a school in Brasilia. And this this year, I've just started taking the role as well, adding to my current role of curriculum coordination to head of college counseling in the school. Great. Chris? Uh, yeah. So my name is uh, Christopher Terribio. I'm the Assistant Director for Global Engagement and the Director of International Admissions and Recruitment for Orange Coast College. Uh, we are a two-year community college located in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, we've done extensive recruitment in Brazil, um, and we've done the KIC Brazil tour, I believe, four times. Great. All right. Let's dive right in. Um, so first, we just wanted to start with an economic perspective in Brazil. Um, many people may have heard that the economy in Brazil has been a little bit up and down, I think mostly. Uh, especially of late related to the elections and to corruption in the government and some things like that. But looking at, um, you know, kind of not only in the last year, but also in the last several years perspective, uh, the Brazilian currency has, for, for example, rebounded 13% in the last um, 10 months alone. And sort of the, the chart here on the bottom left gives some perspective of where it was um, a year ago and, and where it is now. And um, then the chart on the bottom right here is actually a five-year look at the Brazilian stock market. So going all the way back to 2015, um, it gives you a, a good idea of kind of where, where things are in Brazil in terms of people um, who are invested in the stock market. Hopefully a lot of Brazilians down there uh, uh, ready to send their students. Um, looking back at the last five years, they've made a lot of money. It's, it's up 30% in the past year, just to give you some perspective compared to the U.S. stock market, which only went up between 6.4 and 8.4 .8 for the same time period. Um, so there's significant economic um, hope and development in, in looking at Brazil in the last year and even longer. Um, and kind of the impact of these economic changes, uh, Brazil's economy does remain number nine in the world um, and is the largest of all of Latin America. And even with economic challenges at home, we're seeing more parents looking for opportunities to send their children abroad, um, looking for stability, uh, looking to pursue higher education in a more reliable environment. So that is actually um, something that we're seeing an increase in. Um, however, you know, and this is something that I think uh, Emily Henrik and Chris will all touch on a little bit, scholarships and financial aid for international students will be critical for Brazilian student mobility. Um, especially coming to the U.S. So now kind of turning uh, a corner to, to look at it from a little bit more of a, a student mobility perspective. Um, why, why Brazil? Why is Brazil a good country to be considering for everybody? Um, one is, you know, obviously it's a very young population. You have a third of the people that are under the age of 20. Um, they're the number 10 biggest sender of international students to the U.S. in the world. Um, and Univacis conducts uh, an international student recruitment survey every year, um, and actually we are conducting the current one right now, so after the webinar I'll send everybody the link if you'd like to participate in that. But 63% uh, of respondents from our survey last year ranked Latin America as important or most important in terms of um, their international recruitment strategy, 
And one really interesting um, piece that came out of that was respondents rated Brazil as number four, the number four most important country overall, whereas Brazil's ranking on IAE, IAE's Open Doors report is actually number 10. And specifically with the numbers, um, if you're looking at students in Brazil that are going abroad anywhere in the world, um, it, 2018 saw a 20.5 increase um, with students studying abroad all over the world. So that's, that's huge, obviously. And students uh, going to the U.S. specifically from Brazil also increased 11.7%. Um, and the undergraduate student mobility growth was especially healthy, and we'll look at those specific numbers in a minute, but that's that's definitely kind of a really big chunk of, of where that increase came from. And in terms of the, you know, outlook, um, and again, we'll look at the, the chart in a, in a second here on the next slide, but you'll see there was a really big spike um, in about 2000, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a few, a few years ago, 2015, with uh, the Brazil Science Without Borders program and then eventual disbanding, um, and it you know it it took a huge dive again. Um, but we can now see that those um, numbers are kind of finally evening out, and the effects of that are fading. And it leaves us with 25% of Latin American students overall um, studying abroad do choose the U.S., and a majority of those are at the undergraduate level. So this is. Um, just kind of an, an overview of all Latin America countries, the highest highest centers anyway, um, to the US. And this is both graduate and undergraduate. And you can see Brazil is the red line here. And the, the spike in, in 2014, um, all the way up, was the Science Without Borders program. And you can see what happened when it sort of um, began to lose funding and then eventually disbanded. But I put this dotted line in here because you can kind of note that the you know, it's sort of, it, it ended up where it started out, and then you can see it's been increasing again since then. And drilling down into the undergraduate numbers specifically, um, again, these are the top uh, senders um, from Latin America of undergraduate students to the U.S. Um, Mexico, which is the top one, is going down. Um, everyone else is going up a little bit incrementally, but Brazil has gone up by, in the last year, over a thousand students, which is a much bigger increase than we see from any other country in the region. So that's absolutely something yeah. that just can't, can't be ignored. Um, and that's kind of the overall uh, economic and student mobility perspective. And Emily and Henrik, I'll hand it to you. Henrik, I'm going to have you take the BNCC and then I'll do the last two bullets if you don't mind. Um, okay, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> so let me talk a little bit about the situation in Brazil from a curricular standpoint, um, especially for high school. Uh, number one, high school in Brazil is usually considered the last three years of education. So it's not four years for high school, but only three years. So grades 10, 11, and 12. And the government has been working on a change for our, what we call here, Bas Nacional Comum Curricular, which is similar to the Common Core in the US. So, uh, but the idea is that it's going to be used throughout the whole country. And it's based upon some principles, the 10 core competencies that will be seen through throughout the whole system of education. And in high school in particular, what they're trying to do, because this change still has not been implemented, fully implemented, it was just approved in March by the National Congress. So schools are running to try to adapt and make the, find the, the changes and everything. But the idea would be for them to, uh, our current curriculum requires students to take 13 mandatory subjects. So it's like 13 mandatory subjects per grade. And our students are admitted to our, univers to our universities in Brazil purely through an exam. There is an entrance exam, we call it ENEM, and E-N-E-M, and this exam is usually what it takes for students to get into a university. So it doesn't really matter their grades in high school, nothing matters before that exam grade. So you'll see that most students in Brazil, they have a very high level of academic things that studying and being prepared for tests, um, but they might lack in other areas. And what we're trying to do now with this change is making sure that we're preparing students who are more well-rounded, right? So um, one of the core principles as well in the BNCC 
It's the Cassell curriculum, the social emotional learning curriculum from SUNY uh, that's embedded in the BNCC as well. So uh, all of the five principles, five standards and everything. So this should be embedded into all teaching from kindergarten to uh, high school, right? And what we're trying to do right now is that we do have the core subjects. Uh, English, uh, Portuguese and mathematics must be taught throughout the three years of high school every year. And the other subjects, schools are going to be free to choose when or how to teach that. They will be free to do that because that doesn't happen yet. So when you come to Brazil right now, you're going to see that all schools still work on the same principle of the 13 mandatory subjects and all of that, right? So what we're trying to do is change that. There are five different areas in terms of these electives. Uh, one of them would be uh, mathematics, languages, uh, includes arts here, uh, sciences, social studies, and vocational training. And schools would have to offer students the choice of which what of the itineraries they're going to go through, go through, right? Hopefully, they're going to change the entrance exam as well to adapt and cater for these people who are going through this new process, and they should do that. Um, another big difference in Brazil is when you think about our public system and our private system of education, and that is something that in Brazil, uh, our um, but any Brazilian who can actually pay for anything, they will actually pay for a private school. Uh, we don't consider and this is culture in Brazil. Uh, Brazilians don't believe that our public school uh, system of school of education in elementary and secondary school is actually a good one. So they'll pay anything they want through their um, uh, elementary and secondary school so that kids can actually score a very high mark on the exam and go to a federal university, which is then free of charge. So higher education in Brazil uh, is considered free of charge when you think about public universities. We have right now on the rise a large number of private universities as well, which are all paid, of course. So if, if a student wants to go for um, med school in Brazil, you're looking into things that vary from, um, uh, let me say, I think it could go as high, Emily can help me with that, but as high as about three to $4,000 a month uh, that parents would pay to go through a med school program. And that's the other thing in Brazil. In Brazilians think about installments all the time. So if you come to Brazil and say like, oh, it's gonna cost you $40,000. I, I don't have the money a month. I cannot pay that. No, 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 $40,000. Because we buy for everything, we buy everything in installments as well. So people pay for their schooling system in installments. So they don't pay $12,000 a, a year. They say, I pay $1,000. That's it, that's, what, that, that's how much I pay, right? So when you, when you come here, and this is about the language you use, so you don't scare people off. So trying to make sure you, you know that there is this difference, it's very important for you to do that, right? Uh, what has happened recently with the economy and with the um, political changes in Brazil as well, this is not something that's very recent only, but it's a continuation of what was happening before. More and more parents want to send their kids abroad. I can just share with you, we've just been, um, I've just started working in the school as the, the college counseling department, and we're starting running some surveys with students and parents. And I can share with you right now, I was looking into the data today, 90% of the parents, 90% of the parents want their kids to go abroad. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about a, a small number of people. And, and the kids, uh 67 percent of the kids say that they want to go abroad they want to have that as an option to uh, of studies and uh, i can tell you for sure that this is a trend in most of the brazilian schools right on the other hand what is missing and what what universities bring so well and and this is hugely appreciated by any school i go to and, and even here in my school when we talk about it it's information Parents have got no information because schools in Brazil, especially when you're talking about Brazilian schools, not international schools, they don't really have the figure of a college counselor. They don't know how to talk to kids about how to study abroad and how to, they don't know, they don't know that. So they really need information. They really, really need information. They need to know how to go there and, and, and how to go about. And parents, some parents won't really need a financial aid or a scholarship, but most kids are gonna be asking for that. Because even though they're well off, they still, 
uh, they will need that because everyone does, right? Not it's it is. Let's face it, right? It's something that if you can save money, why wouldn't you, right? So, um, Emily, do you want to jump in? I think you did great. You want me to? Can I segue over to the interest? Yeah, I think that if there are no questions, yeah, and then we can go back to questions and talk a bit more about Brazil and Brazilians and right. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, feel free to hop in on this too, since uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about turning interest into uh, applications. Like Henrik said, the numbers have increased drastically. I, I'm always surprised at what the papers say because they're very wrong. I have a caseload that's so large that I think I can't even I can't even imagine how I will handle it uh, this coming season. Henrik, you're going to be getting some of that fallout over here. Um, KIC does a wonderful job of putting in place uh, kids and, and profiles of kids and schools that will be successful at colleges abroad. And I think that's where the interest starts. And Henrik mentioned that there are some pitfalls about maintaining that interest. And a lot of that has to do with lack of understanding. Um, and that means consistency on the part of the colleges that come down to visit. And Chris, for me personally has changed the face at international schools of how kids view community colleges because of the consistency he's provided and he's done that in a lot of great ways because you know budgets are tight for everybody not everybody can travel so what can you put in place um, after those trips of course you always have us on the ground but Chris has done things with students that have made all the difference. He has them up on videos talking about a, you know, a day in their, their life at school. He's made it easy for other kids to contact these ambassadors that he's put into place from all over the world, which has been huge, especially for our Brazilian kids. Um, he makes his information step-by-step step and very accessible, and that's what they need, especially at these schools that we go to that can afford to go and have the want to go, but don't necessarily have the knowledge and the support to go. Um, having these steps in place somewhere on video or on paper is enormous. I would say as much as you can put in the monthly information, it's going to include, I noticed some things down, um, not just tuition, but the return of investment for these kids, they don't understand that when they're paying, they're getting their gym, they're getting their tutors. They're getting, uh, if you could put insurance and break it down, all of these things that they're paying a lot of money for in Brazil that cost extra, they need to understand that that's part of the, the tuition as well. Um, parents too, all information in Portuguese. Parents don't understand the concept of financial aid and that doesn't just mean scholarships, um, merit award, need-based award, if you can break some of these things down and maybe even show a case study about how kids are able to afford coming to school, this would make a huge difference. Um, what else? Um, please have uh, something ready if you're, if you're afraid, because I think Chris can speak to this as well. Chris, you probably get, I always send you so many kids to ask questions, and I'm sure at times oh, it's yeah. overwhelming. Um, Education USA, you're always great about saying check with your Edge USA officer, um, HECA and IECA for the independent counselors that can help these kids for schools that don't have counselors. These are resources that when you come to Brazil or other countries that don't uh, don't have counselors, that you should offer up as part of your counseling when you come visit, in my opinion. Um, and that helps drive the interest and turn that interest into applications because they have somebody in their court. And that's really all they need is to break down the system a little bit and feel that they have somebody consistently, whether it's you and your office or some way you've provided, it, it, it makes the pathway a little bit clearer. They just want transparency. And if that's the end goal for all of us, I think that you'll see a lot more of this interest turn into applications. You want to bounce can off I, that? All right, Henrik. Can I, can, I, can I just add something there in terms of the way you approach students, the way you approach parents, so that you can show that based on the question on the chat as well. So you can show students that uh, they will get good quality of education. And this is something that we as counselors, we talk a lot to families and talk a lot to students. And I can guarantee that um, most, if not all, 
uh, universities that you can go to in the U.S. right now, and you compare that to a federal university in Brazil in terms of infrastructure, services you can provide, networking opportunities, you have a lot more to offer. So this is something that we have to be talking to parents uh, about. And, and, and sometimes when you come, you like talking a lot about numbers. And this is something that it doesn't really go well with our uh, the average students in Brazil. Uh, we, we don't do that, right? So we go for images. We go for, okay, show me this is something. It's enticed me first, and they'll get the numbers to go home and talk to my parents about the numbers. They, they want to see the numbers, of course. But if you just show like, because we're number one in this and number three here and 25% and 85%, number what, right? So is it, is it McDonald's, like number one, two, three, or am I ordering food or something? That's how, that's how far we think about the numbers at first. So uh, in terms of picking their interest, in terms of uh, making sure the consistent quality of information, it would be about sharing what you have best. Um, in terms of even alumni or I mean, anything that can get them relate to relate to you, that makes a big, big difference, right? So if they can relate to you, so like, oh, I want to find out more about your institution now, right? Okay. And then you can start talking about it. And then when you go home and talk to the parents, parents are going to say, like, okay, tell me more about it. Why is this such a good place? And even though they go for rankings at times, just using a number, it doesn't really communicate well. Right, so say, oh, because we're ranked number three in the country in this. Like, yeah, I mean, what is the program like? Who are the, the professors? Who are the people who go there? Can you give me an example of a good alumni? Oh, okay, now I can go into the rankings because the truth is we're exposed to so many different rankings that, uh, and they just don't know, right? And they, if you think about even Brazilian education, when you ask parents and, and kids, what are the good schools in Brazil? They're gonna give you names like, uh, USP, Unicamp, ITA, IMI, UNIB, UFMG, UFRJ, uh, and that's it. They won't go to many other places, generally speaking. And there are amazing universities here, but it's just kind of like laziness. So uh, it, it is something about connecting. We as Brazilians, we're very relatable people. We're huggers, we like talking to you, we, like t we, we touch people a lot when we're speaking, we're Latin, right? So we do that a lot. If we can relate, it's very funny. If, if you relate, you're like, that university is great. Why? Because Kate is there. So Kate is amazing. Of course, that's an amazing university, right? So uh, this is the kind of thing that also you need to communicate when you're talking to them. So that's, that's one of the ways to break away from rankings, right? Um, and and, and this, is, this is important in terms of consistency, clarity, transparency, but knowing exactly what to say, not just a lot of fact sheets, right? So like, oh, they're, they're, it won't really go well. They won't really bond. They won't really connect. And then they'll forget what you told them in three minutes. Mm -hmm. Right? So that, that would be something to add there to the piece of communication. And this is, again, uh, surprisingly, that's very positive feedback that we do in our approach, right, Kate, with universities. This approach of talking, Chris, does that very well. So students remember you by name. So that, that's amazing. That's really good. Want to hop in, Chris? Yeah, I couldn't agree with anything. I couldn't disagree with anything that you said. So, um, I guess with, in terms of the follow up and things like that, I thought that's just is something that you're supposed to be doing anyways. Um, uh -huh. But so thank you for that praise, though. But I, I, I do agree that that personal ch touch, especially in this market, is incredibly important. Um, I have my slides and stuff that will tell you, give you some tips and whatnot. Um, but yeah, whenever it's my turn, I'll talk. Yeah, I think. Um... Everybody that comes, how are you? Are you counseling before your marketing? Basically, is what it's going to come down to uh, in Brazil yeah. for sure, and that's going to play into how you're reviewing applicants. How much do you know? Because the region is vast. You're not going to counsel and market to the same way in Sao Paulo that you would up in Manaus. Uh, you have to be aware of what's going on. AIC does an excellent job of breaking that down and breaking down the schools and kind of giving you an idea of what's driving them and what's driving their students' educations. Um, it's going to be an interesting shift when we move to these itineraries, uh, the, the common core, because 
I'm curious to see how many schools are able to financially offer and physically offer all of these different categories. So it's going to be important that you're asking questions that may not fall onto the application. You know, what are you studying and why? And when did you figure this out? And, you know, if you go above and beyond a little bit, we and ask the right questions, which again is something that comes up a lot in the KIC orientation and throughout the trips, um, you'll get to know your kids better. And I think that's what they need and want the most is a lot of them feel that they might be pigeonholed into these profiles. And it's simply not true. And, and although I probably shouldn't say it and be recorded saying it, stuff like ACRO, uh, not cool. It's, it's incorrect, hugely for me. And, and we like to think that since we're on the ground, we can offer a better idea of how to profile some of these kids. And, and we hope that there are a few little tricks that you can take home that will help you prepare for something like this and also maybe take to your higher ups that say, this is how we get the numbers. This is what we have to do if we want the numbers, because even though we say as counselors, numbers are, are, are secondary, ranking is secondary, we know that it matters. Um, and there are definite pathways to get there. Okay. Great. Um, should we move on to Chris's slides? Ready? All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So yeah, I just wanted to share you from my perspective. Um, so Brazil is one of our top markets, actually, and we've seen a lot of success in this particular region uh, since I first started at OCC in fall of 2015. Um, so when I first started working for OCC, it was actually my first um, tour with Univisys for Brazil. Um, so we started off with 20 students, and we more than doubled now, so we're up to 43 students. And I chose KIC Univisys as our service provider because it is a high touch market. That counseling piece is gonna be very important when talking to this group of students. And also I just like the diversity of schools that we got to visit. Um, so we visit international schools, national schools, and because I'm a two-year community college, the profile of our institution does allow me to attract a wide net of students. So that's what I like most about um, KIC and also the presentations that we do right before is a really good way for you to talk about your institution. Um, so it's not necessarily a very, it's not a passive way of recruiting. I feel it's a more of an assertive way of mm -hmm. reaching out to these students because a lot of these students are going to have questions. Um, like Henrik said, um, a lot of these students, and Emily said this too, a lot of the students are typically not informed about how U.S. education works. Um, so that constant piece is going to be very critical when you're talking to Brazilian students. Um, but yeah, we've done particularly well in our first year actually with KIC. We enrolled 10 students as a result of the tour. And I had no expectations, quite frankly, when I first joined the tour. Um, I was very brand new to my institution, but for some reason we did really, really well in the first year. And it's continued on ever since. And some of the students that we have attracted to OCC are some of the most talented driven, passionate students I've ever met in my career. Um, so yeah, let me just um, go to the next slide um, and how we've done. So I think the most important thing when you are recruiting students from Brazil is just setting the infrastructure to support them. I think that's very important. Um, so the most important thing, like um, Kate mentioned before, it's a very cost sensitive market. So you actually should have it in your infrastructure that you're providing something to the students. So um, low cost tuition or scholarships are gonna be very, very important. If you have an athletic program that has scholarships too, there's a lot of students asking for athletic scholarships and things like that, but it is a very cost sensitive market. Although rankings are, you know, are attracted to students, it, I find it it's not necessarily their deciding factor in choosing a school. Um, the first thing is gonna be if they're gonna be able to afford it and what opportunities there are for funding. Um, I also found um, that uh, it's a great market for community colleges, actually, and I get a lot of questions about transfer. So if you're a university that has a lot of support for transfer, I would highly recommend that you do mention that when you're recruiting students from Brazil. Um, I know Florida International University has been done a really good job. In fact, we send Brazilian students there, in fact. Um, so talk about your transfer admissions because there's a lot of barriers for a lot of Brazilian students coming to the U.S., cost just access and things like that. So I find that very important. Um, Emily also alluded this, I mean, talk about this too. Use context when you're evaluating credentials. Um, Acro, again, is not really the best tool. Um, so 
you really want to look at the students' profiles because the grades are incredibly inflated. Um, so use context when you're evaluating credentials. And if you don't, if you can't do that, maybe not go to Brazil yet. So you might want to study their credentials first um, before you ever consider going to that market. Um, in terms of follow-up, student assistants from Brazil are incredibly important. I'm a pretty small operation in terms of our recruitment. So I have enlisted a lot of our Brazilian students to help us to follow up. So um, in context, I had like three student assistants from Brazil at one time. They're very active on social media. Right now I have two. If you have Brazilian students that are very active in social media, like social media influencers, that really does help a lot. So for example, one of my student assistants from Brazil has 34,000 followers on Instagram. I post that I'm traveling and the word gets out that I'm there. So definitely use, if you have student assistants, that personal touch is gonna to be very important. And I've seen it before. I had Brazilian families come into my office once. I sent a student from Brazil out there and all of a sudden they're applying. So definitely that personal touch is very important. Henry talked about this too. Statistics don't really resonate with a lot of students from this market. Um, they do in Asia when they're looking at they're very rank sensitive, but I noticed that students are more attracted to fun facts about your institution than more so than statistics. Mm -hmm. um, because Brazil is on a different academic calendar, you might want to also consider your spring admissions as well. Um, so we have several students from Brazil actually apply for the first semester in the spring just because of the academic calendar where they graduate in December. Um, so. I guess overall, there's actually a lot of potential in Brazil. Brazil is a very diverse place. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of vendors out there that recruit, um, but I really do like KIC Univisys. It seems to work for us. Um, what I also like about KIC Univisys is that they do network with Education USA, and we've done Education USA events through KIC, and they've been, they have a huge presence in, the United, in Brazil, actually. I think they have like 37 centers and KIC has um, done a really good job integrating and involving them in their recruitment as well. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about my perspective on the Brazil market, let me know. You can hit me on Instagram, Facebook, I'm pretty active there. Um, my shirt is from Brazil, so if you're interested in to know who the designer is, just let me know and I can drop that as well. <laughs> Great. Um, Chris, should we play your video now? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Actually, so I have a video right now. It's actually one of our students that I recruited through the KIC Univisys tour. This is Emily's former student. Um, so, <laughs> oh, and actually, I forgot to mention one more thing, too. Traveling with Emily and Henrik is really valuable, actually, because they were in higher, lead, um, higher education leadership in their respective high schools before. So they really know the insight about the market, and I found that very valuable going there. Um, they come from a more educator perspective, more so than a marketing perspective, and that has really helped us really connect with students. Um, but yeah, go ahead and play the videos for people. Great. Hopefully doesn't lag. Oi, my name is Gabriela. Hi, my name is Gabriela. I originally found out about OCC at a college fair in my high school, Pan American School of Porto Alegre. And coming out of high school, I really had no idea which career path I wanted to follow. And OCC really gave me the chance to explore new classes and different possibilities. I like all of my professors and I had the chance to get to know them personally and they all taught me lessons that go beyond the classroom. I participated in many on-campus activities, some of the highlights being a tutor for the Student Success Center where I got to work with a lot of faculty and learn with them. I would definitely recommend especially international students to attend the SI sessions or drop in tutoring. It's very interactive so you also get to meet a lot of new people, people that are in your classes and make new friends. I think the social life is very good. I made a lot of international friends. I made friends at my orientation, a lot of local <clears throat> friends too. So besides the academic, it's very good socially. Thank you by OCC. Welcome to OCC. Thank you. Great. Um, Chris, did you have anything else? Um, no, that pretty wraps up. That's where I, that wraps up my perspective. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm, again, Brazil is one of our priority markets. We'll continue to go out there consistently. 
Um, they've been, again, wonderful students, um, very talented students. And it's actually a really fun market to recruit at. Um, I just like the fact that these students are really, yeah, they're fun. It's a fun market, honestly. Like a lot of the students, you know, they're very, they're very open. Um, they're very loose. They're very open-minded, especially. Um, they're just wonderful kids. And what I love most about Brazil, again, it's just diversity. You have students from so many different backgrounds so many different walks of life. It is just an amazing market to go into. And just to give you some context, I mean, again, we're not a one of those college, I mean, those um, colleges without borders types of schools, and we're still able to see growth. And honestly, California is not nat 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 necessarily a natural place for Brazilian students to go compared to like places like Florida, for example, but there's a lot of potential out there. And if you can add that personal touch, definitely go. If you need a break from really high stress markets, Go to Brazil. <laughs> you guys, I, I have to. I, I'm just going to pin this on the question over here because uh, there is our Catholic schools and is Texas attractive? Y'all, y'all, you like how I woke up <laughs> there? Um, I really honestly believe that Chris has been so successful because he put his mind and his heart into counseling and marketing the way they needed to be marketed to. Gabriella came and had the money to go to any school really she wanted to go to and she didn't poo poo the community college or you know what we talk about is like oh it's not a brand name well come on look at what she's done there look at how happy she is there and that's Chris was able to identify all the pieces she needed to hear and he worked really hard on it I remember that I remember that year when I was you know Chris can you talk to these students can you do this and we talked about doing videos and we talked about uh, changing some of his paperwork and, and, and his marketing. And he was able to do that where it became a permanent part of how he comes down to Brazil every year. And I think it's almost made it, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, easier for you because you're, instead of answering all the same questions over and over again, you're able to direct kids and say, you know, go look at this. And it's our, it's like working for you alongside right. yeah. some of these pieces that you've developed and and that you become a huge name down there i mean everywhere we go your table is always full and i think you made it i think you made it work for you you know instead of running after it it kind of works with you thank you yeah it could be the shirt it could be <laughs> Um, great. Well, uh, in the interest of time, I know we're a few minutes over. I'm just going to wrap up really quickly and then we can open it for questions. Um, as everybody has mentioned, uh, we do have some tours to Brazil and Latin America this fall um, in September. So there are still spaces. If you're interested, just reach out and let us know. Um, and also, as was mentioned, you can do um, kind of what we're a little bit better known for is having a small group and having a more counseling focused approach. We do presentations and workshops in schools. Um, we do a mock admissions panel that has worked really well. Um, and this is to the whole student group before it breaks down into the sort of more fair style interaction. Um, and, uh, and you get to travel with Emily and or Henrik um, and me. So that's always a <laughs> bonus as well. Um, and just uh, very quickly, we are we are at Univisus doing some new things in 2019. <coughs> we have the um, counselor student newsletter that is open to our tour participants that we send to all of our 17,000 plus students and counselor contacts from all our tours around the world. Um, we put together an annual uh, wrap-up report with mac macroeconomic data and international student mobility data on again all the regions that we work in across the world and share that with all of our tour partners. Um, we do have some format changes to school visits this year, including shortening the introductions for each university. Everybody still does get a chance to go up and introduce themselves to the entire student audience, but just a little bit shorter. Instead of one minute, we are now doing 30 seconds because um, it, student, student attention span is one reason. It also increases your interaction time with them as well. And as I mentioned, the mock admissions panel. Um, and that's it, and I would uh, like to um, open it up for questions. I see there's one here. Um, are we, do we only do Brazil in fall? No, we don't. We do Brazil in fall and in spring. And in spring, usually the last few years, it's been a combination of Brazil and Ecuador and Colombia, um, with about half of the tour, or a little bit more than half, being Brazil specifically. Um, 
And then we've we've also had I've seen I've seen some really great questions in the chat box, and Emily and Henrik have done an awesome job of answering those. Um, but anybody else, feel free to unmute yourself. You can ask a question verbally. Um, you can type in the chat box. But um, we're happy to hang out and answer a few more questions if anybody has any. Do we want to go back to McKaylee's question? Oh, we, School we trying to. Actually, we have one from McKaylee who asked this question twice. I forgot the last time. Okay. She said, any advice for schools trying to break into the market or visit for the first time? I, I can. Henrik, hop on this. I've just been taking notes. Um, and this is specific to, to KIC because we can really dig into this more. But in general, um, I think before you come down to Latin America or Brazil, I would ask you uh, if you came on the KIC tour, what's your smart goal? You know, your specific marketable or, or measurable, attainable goal, and and that may be different from your higher up. Your higher up may say, I want 50 Brazilians. You may come down and tell me, I'd be happy with three. I want to know what kind of kids you want. I want to know, do you want an international school kid? Are you looking more for the national school kids that are going to come in and change the classroom dynamic a little bit differently? Um, I want to know how many you already have. I want to know where they're from. What cities are they coming from? What kind of diversity are you looking for before you come down? Um, I'd like to know what your your materials look like. If you're counseling before your marketing, I'm going to ask you if there if you have stats on there. Where are the values in them? You're telling me you're number one in physics. Okay, but are you number one in student happiness? Henrik brought that up. So make sure that you have that balance of, of values, personal values to connect with those kids. Um, if you're coming down, can you show me a sample application? Because if I'm at a kid at a school that doesn't uh, have a counselor, I don't even know what a finished application looks like. And I don't know what you mean when you talk about certificate of finances or the CSS profile. Could you show me one, please? Um, if you if you if I like you so far, where what where can I get follow up? Is there like a, a step by step graph of applying and 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 what does financial aid look like? If Maria applied to your school and she didn't get the athletic scholarship that she so badly wants, where else could she get money? If she got merit award, how much did she get? And did she get it for having a three point five, or did she get it for getting this on the SATs? And maybe could you walk me through that and some kind of flow chart so I could just see like how much money could I possibly get if I did all of these steps and had this kind of criteria. I need to see a sample of somebody that's done it, uh, imagined or real. Um, and then, you know, what are my deadlines and what are the expectations? What am I playing with? Because it's really confusing for me as a Brazilian trying to calendar all my dates for the national exams and everything that's expected. And I have a six month break when I'm graduated from a Brazilian high school until I have to start with you. So how does it all line up? How can I possibly handle all of that? Could you could you align that for me and could you explain it? So, you know, little pieces, uh, but a big deal when you're marketing in Brazil that you need to think about coming down. Like I said, Chris has his toolkit and I think that's made a huge difference in interest turning into applications. And we run this down really well in KIC and we look at all of your materials and we'll help on the ground and we'll give you feedback. Um, but for me, it's the best way. I think you want to align yourself with vendors. Oh, sorry. I think you want to align yourself with vendors that does have more of a counseling, um, well, more counseling point of view. Um, Brazil actually has a lot of agents um, that are looking for like transactional like compensation and things like that. But you don't really have to go that route. Um, again, KIC has been very active. Education USA has been very active in the region. Again, they have 37 centers. It's one of the most active Education USA um, countries in the world. So definitely just align with those because, again, that personal touch is very important. Um, so you can really just go with anybody that has more of a costing point of view. And it doesn't have to be expensive either. So, and KIC, in my opinion, is not very expensive. And uh, just to add on that, it would be um, it's the idea of being more flexible in terms of the uh, kind of questions you're going to get. And it goes along with everything that Emily said and Chris said. Um, and, and it all boils down to how you do your research. For instance, depending on the language you use in Brazil, people just won't get it. So if you talk about GPA, 
Um, we don't do GPA here, so say like, oh, you need GPA of 3.5, so what, what does that mean, right? Uh, but all of that during orientation, you know, we inform you of all of that, right, during our calls. And so making sure you talk to people who have come to Brazil quite often will help as a first timer. And but also being prepared from this personal side as well, being more approachable. So a couple of cultural changes like, like any country, right? Uh, but in terms of the language that they use and in terms of the uh, um, approachability, Right, we love our lunch here as well, right, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up. <laughs> Kate, yeah, Kate says, I'm, I'm. Whenever we have our, our travel schedule, we're always running from school to school to school, and then Henrik just looks and says, Well, when are we going to have lunch? We need like an hour, an hour and a half to have lunch. <laughs> Brazilians eat lunch, right? So uh, we do need our lunch. It's our most important meal of the day, actually. And, um, but anyway. Uh, you're going to enjoy food in Brazil. Food in Brazil is really good. Uh, our food is delicious. I really like it. <laughs> right? So, uh, but being approachable. So, uh, doing the research in terms of the language, just like I mentioned about installments. Don't, don't try to, can you in any possible way just work with the financial part in any different way or not? Can you present it differently to students? Um, when you're talking about grades, uh, can you make sure that you understand our, what our students go through? We're asking, when asking about extracurriculars, when you have kids going through 13 different subjects uh, with a very high rigor and they're preparing for one excruciating exam that's going to take place in two different days on Saturday and Sunday, asking them like, what about your extracurriculars, your interests? And that's one of the, one of the biggest uh, uh, difficulties we have here, asking kids, so what do you like doing? Right? Who are you? They're like, um, I like physics. They say, like, no, no, I mean, in addition to that, because that's their life, right? And parents, because of the competition, they're constantly doing that, right? So uh, it is something that you'll need to break away. And, and we visit a wide range of schools, from international schools, in which you can use some of the uh, lingo that you normally use, to some national schools uh, where students have a very good level of proficiency in English. But as we mentioned before, very little information so uh, you come in here and start using lots of words and language a difficult language for them and they go like i don't know what that is right so um because like your i20 oh you need to get your i20 so like, what, what 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 is that right i don't know what that is your tuition what, what does include what is included in tuition what is right so students they have these basic questions uh in some of the schools even though they're very well off so uh it's information Great, and Claudia, if you want to unmute yourself, you're welcome if you would like to say anything. Else. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, it's so nice to hear your voice. <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry to, to interfere, but uh, you know, I've been working as a, a counselor now here at the University of Oklahoma, and I'm also a high school counselor in Brazil. And now we are having a group of students who are coming here. And what I notice that I they they really need now this phase of that they have already committed and they are coming the sense of belonging. Like is my son or my daughter is going to belong to this place? I, I, will people care about my son or my daughter? I, you know, this is very important to a, a Brazilian parent, okay? I'm a parent too, so <laughs> this is important, okay? Oi, hey, Claudia, tudo bom? Tudo bem? <laughs> tudo bom? Como é que você tá? In case you want to hear tudo Portuguese, bem? that's okay. <laughs> uh, did, did, you, did you hear so, what I said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we all did. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. I didn't know it, if it was working. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. That's a great perspective. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that, actually. Um, so a, a lot of the students um, are looking for that sense of belonging. So I'm actually the advisor for the Brazilian Student Association. <laughs> so that's been helping me connect with students as well. But they're looking for that, you know, opportunity to, you know, meet with other students, but also celebrate their culture on, our, on their campuses, too. So. Any other questions? 
You can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat box. Any opportunities to engage with students oh. over social media or webinars prior to travel? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> you want to take that? Um, yeah, actually, I have a tip with that one. So if you have a Brazilian student that can Google your school's name in Portuguese and see what actually comes up. There's actually a lot of content out there if you do that with any language um, that you're interested in. But in particularly with um, students from Brazil that I found, they're very active on social media. So you might want to start there. Um, with webinars, social media, yeah, you definitely want to have a social media presence that does have um, content in Portuguese that's done by a student from Brazil, so not necessarily done by your marketing department because um, they're looking basically for the real deal, you know, the perspective from the student. Um, webinars I've done, I mean, I've done them through Education USA, um, so that's been very helpful. I've done it at a couple of high schools too that I'm unable to reach out to. Um, so yeah, there's definitely opportunities for that. Yeah, and Kate, if if they have pieces ready before, uh, if they sign up for the KIC tour and they have pieces ready, um, Henrik emails and sends a lot of information prior to the visits, right, that a lot of the schools have been better at giving access to because they're getting it to the students before we come. So there is yeah. that that opening. And, yeah, and we also put together a student booklet, which um, I, I know the people that have traveled with us know about, but not everybody might. We put together a student booklet, which has a profile page on every university that's visiting um, in the group. And so it's 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 information that we get from you and it's it's um just an opportunity for students to have everything together all at once um you can bring a little bit fewer marketing materials from your end because you know that they're all going to get a copy of that anyway but the the digital copy of that is sent to the counselors ahead of the visits and as well and they sometimes share it with their students um over you know email listservs or, or even with parents or anything too so we do send those out Wow, that's such a nice compliment. This is the most helpful webinar that she's been to in a long time. Thank you so much. I'm really excited that that so many of you have joined and, and stayed so long after the yeah. it's a testimonial right there. Capture that one for the for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, great. And yeah, and um, you'll you'll all get an email from us with a like I said with a record a copy of the recording, um, a link to the student recruitment survey if anybody is able to um, lend your two cents to that, that would be great, um, as well as okay. our very nice <laughs> show <off. laughs> We're decorating the office now, I just, I just need to find a way to stick that to the wall. <laughs> Let me take you to the pool in the backyard and show you a view of that, see if I can beat it. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, really I forgot one more point that I wanted to bring up actually, so it's on the student services side. So. Um, one thing about Brazil, the visa approvals are pretty high. So if you're looking for a market that does have high visa approval rates, it's actually Brazil. In fact, I was just looking at stats. Um, there's been a 13% increase in F1 visa approvals from Brazil. So you really don't have to worry about that when you're going on to recruit. Thank you for that, Chris. That was a nice little tidbit. Yeah. Cool. Great. Anyway, okay. that's it. Well, uh... <laughs> Thanks, thanks everyone so much. And thank you, Chris, Emily, and Henrik. You guys have been phenomenal. Um, very valuable perspectives, really appreciate it. So um, yeah, thanks. Thanks everyone. Hope to see you this fall. Bye. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.